Today I want to really break down um, one of the main key training principles. There are a few different ones that we've been running over, but I really want to emphasize on this one. We have variation, which is obviously, and when I say main key principles of training, it's really these fundamental principles that are timeless. You can say whatever you want about them, but they work. Um, in any type of literature you guys will read about training, there are timeless principles when it comes to training that will help you to build muscle, making sure that you're burning the right amount of fat, and they, they are the fundamental building blocks that you should be looking at whenever you're hitting a plateau, you are, you're starting to feel bored of your training, um, whatever the case may be, right? So the first one is variation. Variation is obviously what we are always doing in our training program. For you who are uh, my one-on-one -on -one clients, we are making sure that you're frequently changing your programs. Even if it might be changing the, um, the repetition, it might be a little thing as changing the rest period, it might be a little thing as changing the exercise or completely rechanging the program. Whatever the case may be, we are changing with variation to making sure that the muscles are getting um, different type of stimulus, right? It's specific training. If you want to be better at something, train specific for that way. Obviously, that specific training has a huge, that's, that's the main thing, that's what we're using, obviously. Um, there are a bunch more, but the most important one is progression. That's what we're gonna talk about today. And progression is not on, you can see it so clearly when it comes to bachata. Whenever, whatever type of dance it is, you can see it so clearly. When it comes to hip hop, for example, if I'm, if I'm just doing this basic hip movement, this is basic hip movement, nothing crazy. But if I'm using this, I can start to go. So I'm progressing, but I'm still using this. We're still the same step. This is still the same. I'm just changing my shoulders. It's still the same step, but I'm progressing. So it's adding, but at the same time taking away something. But I'm staying in the same step, always progressing, because I'm always doing this. Thumbs up if I'm making sense right now. Perfect. So that's when it comes to your dancing, but when it comes to your weight training, I don't know why, we, I'm not gonna use this, I think. When it comes to your weight training progression, now I'm talking about being in the weight room. If I'm in the weight room, what the, the <coughs> if I'm in the weight room, progression might be that you are uh, using a, pr a principle that is progressive overload, that you are constantly making sure that you are going heavier. That's the fastest way to build muscle. The absolute fastest way to build muscle to make sure that you're always getting stronger is to use progressive overload. Progressive overload means that each time you are training, this is especially if you, if you are a beginner or like in the first few years of your training. If you're lifting, let's say you're doing biceps curls, you're doing simple biceps curls. If I did 20 kilos 10 times, that was my maximum. That was my repetition maximum was um, 20 kilos, 10 repetition. That was the last week. Now if I'm here this week, I knew what I did last week because I'm always logging. That's why I always bother you guys to log your training. But if you knew what you did there, it's a thousand percent sure that you're gonna be stronger last than the next time or than the other times. Now. When it comes to your body weight training, might be a little different here, but it's the same principle. And you as a dancer, just need to start using your creativity. Progressive overload or progression for body weight, very simple. Let's take the squats, for example. Now, if I'm doing a basic squat right here, and I want to make it harder, what do I do? put my leg up, in this case being a kettlebell, or a bench, or a chair, or whatever the case may be, now it's gonna be heavier for my back side, all right? If I put my leg in the back, 
it goes on the back side of my leg, the glutes, the hamstrings. And it's heavier, why? Because all of my weight goes to one leg right now. Makes sense, right? Let's, let's take V-ups for example now. Now, V-ups are these ones. That's a V-up. What do I do if I want to make that easier? Because now it's reversed. If I want to make that easier, I just go with one leg and one arm. Because I don't need to support both. Makes sense, right? So it's the same principle, but reverse thinking. Okay? Now, one hand. Easier, easier, harder. Now, if I want to make that even easier, I just, because again, you need to think of this as a dancer. You need to think of this as creativity. What am I doing? I'm lifting my body and I'm lifting my legs. So how can I make that hard, uh, easier? I just take away my upper body. It's almost the same thing. You see, it's the same movement, but I got my hands in the ground, right? And this, it's also the same movement. I'm just taking my legs away. Now, if I need extra support, I swing with my arms. Yeah, but Sebastian, swinging with your arms is cheating. Yes, it is, but it's better than doing nothing. <laughs> You know what I mean? Uh, yeah, it's cheating, you're cheating. It's, it's actually called sheet reps, but it's better than doing nothing. Recap, we've been running over progression when it comes to the weight room, body weight training. Then you also have progression when it comes to eating meat and fasting or just your diet in general. Don't start a diet and come out shooting, thinking that you're gonna nail everything. That's not how this works. I don't name my diet all the time. Like I don't want you to, 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 be make, to be hitting all of your calories every day. I don't want you to do that. That's being in jail or going to, or I say being in jail with all the respect in the planet because I know there are people that are doing um, bodybuilding, but that's a completely different monster. It's very important to remember the bodybuilding it's the competition and the one that is the most obsessed wins. That's the name of the game when it comes to bodybuilding. So that's a completely different thing what we are doing, right? But when it starts hitting 70% of your diet the first week, after two weeks you hit 80% of the days, 90% of the days. <laughs> My point is that unless you have something, unless I have something that I need to like aesthetically look my best, then why, why push myself in, in, to an extreme level? Because if you push yourself to an extreme level and you're failing, you're getting in that loop, you promised yourself something that you couldn't hold. Once you're promising yourself something that you couldn't hold, that also is a habit. That also sends nerve signals to your brain. I'm gonna start training New Year's resolution. Let's go, I'm gonna start training eight days a week. That works, for, that works for two weeks. And after two weeks, you fell off. And now all of a sudden I'm alone at the gym. 5.30. But the last week it's been me and 10,000 other people. But they are starting to fall off already. Why? Because they put the bar too high. This is making sense, right? So, even your eating and fasting window. Progression. Progression is the key. 